City Rollers, and you're locked in to Beyond Ringside. Listen up. This is the NWA North American Heavyweight Champion, the Temptation Sean Tempers, and right now you are locked in with Beyond Ringside. Is sitting ringside at a heavyweight title fight on your bucket list? If so, this is Gary Parrish telling you to get ready to cross that one off your list because on Saturday, April 7th, six-time world champion James Lights Out Tony will fight Bobby Gunn for the IBA World Heavyweight title at the Lander Center down in South Haven. It's going to be the first heavyweight title fight in the Mid-South area since Lennox Lewis and Mike Tyson traded punches at the Pyramid back in 2002. Tickets are on sale at Ticketmaster.com and the Lander Center box office right now. It's going to be seven undercard fights, then the main event. It's James Tony versus Bobby Gunn for the IBA heavyweight title. So get your tickets now, and then I'll see you at the Lander Center on April 7th. When planning your next party or special event, insist on the best. Full Range Entertainment is a professional entertainment company providing a full range of services. From professional disc jockeys and MCs to catering and photography, when the details of your special day must be perfect, call us first. Wedding receptions, corporate parties, school functions, birthday celebrations, and more. We also have Birmingham's largest selection of karaoke tracks available. With over 40 years combined experience, Full Range Entertainment can provide you with the talent and professionalism you need and deserve to make your next event one you'll never forget for more information on the full range of services we offer call 533 hits that's 533 h-i-t-s or check us out on our website at fullrangeentertainment.com This is Dale the Demon Torborg. My name is Bryce Rensburg. I'm the Chikara Senior Official. This is April Hunter from AprilHunter.com. I'm Bobby Chez, a three-time world champion, Showtime expert analyst. This is Coolio with the flow, a.k.a. the Ghetto Gourmet. This is Dan the Beast Severin, the only Triple Crown champion in the UFC history. Hi, everybody. This is Jerry the King Lawler. That's right. WWE Hall of Famer. This is Jeff Damon from Deadliest Wear on Spike TV. You have tuned in and are now live listening to the three-time NWA heavyweight champion of the world, Scrap and Anna Pierce, and just like you, I am also locked in. And brother, we are beyond ringside. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, lift off. The music plays, the microphones go hot, and the attitude is damn sure there. Greetings, good evening, how you doing? Welcome to Beyond Ringside, Sunday night, 27 minutes before the top of the hour, and we are set and ready to play live from the Full Range Entertainment Control Center, live from the vault, yours truly, the Magic City Motor Mouth Fast Study Lane, being joined by tag team partners, the Oracle of Ominous, the Wicked Nemesis. How's everyone doing tonight? Wait, don't die on me. <laughs> what the phone is? No, I was talking about somebody. Somebody's going to die on me. Oh, no, that's not a good thing. Tag team partner Polly Wells, come on in. Hulk Hogan's sex tape being shopped around. Who's ready to see that? What you going to do when Viagra don't work for you? At least it's not the Andre the Giant. There sex you tape. go. Oh, my God. Talk about a backdoor to China. And first off, before we say or do anything, uh, going into shoot life for just a minute, our tag team partner, The Wicked Nemesis. Yes, I even called him by his shoot name, The Wicked Nemesis. Um, welcoming a brand new addition to the family. Congratulations, my friend. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, Lilith Jupiter, 8 pounds, 20 inches. She was uh, yeah, she was ready to come out. She was fighting the entire time. And she is, uh, the only time she cries is when she's hungry and when, when she poops. Other than that, she just stares at you. In other words, she is going to be the complete antithesis of you, and that is low maintenance, right? Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for those who don't know, antithesis means opposite. So this is a Yes, I know. That's the paradigm in play. You forget. I I actually um, ate a thesaurus when I was an infant, so some of those words actually were absorbed through osmosis. So, Well, next time I think you need to take that thesaurus and, and kind of you know, put it in a shredder and spread it across Carrollton, Georgia. Lord have mercy those people. Yeah. Now, you had the PWA yeah. show last night, right? Oh, God. Oh, yeah. The infamous PWA show. Yes, sir. 
Yeah, Shane Knowles was doing everything he could to put you in your place, keep the rest of... Uh, now, I'm, I'm trying to remember because I know you're operating as something wicked in AWA, an MOD in ACW. Have you decided on, has everybody come together on a name for the faction over in uh, PWA? And yes, we have. The Tribulation, because it's the beginning of the end. Ah, cool. That works. Um, Come on, you know if I'm involved, you know it's going to have some cool ass name. You know, there you go. Know. There you go. Yeah, I'd like to thank the crew from uh, GCW last night who voted me as having uh, the bump of the night. Um, for those who made it up to Jasper, Alabama, you know what I mean, over at the A&E Fun Center. I'll give you the short version of the story. Uh, last night during the main event, it was the GCW World Television Championship on the line. Uh, the Psycho Circus defending against the Inhuman Fly, the one-man swarm. And there was a point where Circus was outside the ring. And the Inhuman Fly went to the top rope and top up the top of the turn post and almost pulled a Mike Posey from uh, the week previous in Palmerdale but he managed to get his, get and keep his footing and the fly came down beautiful flying cross body from the top rope onto the floor into the waiting arms of the psycho circus however the law of gravity took a little bit more of its toll on the psycho circus we found out he's a little bit physically disoriented as well as psychologically out there um, circus inadvertently lost his balance came backwards crashing down into one of my speakers and then caromed into my table and I'm trying to save a laptop and this is all a shoot kids um, as I'm trying to save the laptop I see the speaker coming down I start to lunge to get it but the the momentum of the table being shoved carries me back and I do a flip over a chair <laughs> okay. so guess what being an announcer gets hazard pay sometimes <laughs> but Unless you're working with Miz, because Miz will just sidestep your ass. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Dang, I thought you were saying that something happened in the ring. I didn't, I didn't realize it was a bump gone bad. Uh, life happens. That's what, happens. that's what happens when you get the inhuman fly. That man is one big muscle. The, the inhuman fly is so ripped up that that guy is just, and that's what happens. Like you said, the law of gravity. Well, you got to remember, the inhuman fly weighs a thousand pounds. So I've heard. Yeah, and I think he proved it to the Psycho Circus last night. But in all sincerity, I'm okay. Uh, my back is a little bit twerked because of the angle in which I flipped over the chair. I, I, I was joking with a friend of mine from the show um, earlier today. I said, I guess I'm going to have to start doing my stretching exercises again before I pick up the microphone. <laughs> so <laughs> we're going to work on that concept. Um, making the move into everything going on, did either of you get a chance to catch Ring of Honor's show yesterday? Uh, I, I missed it. Sure didn't. <laughs> okay. If you get a chance to see it, I have to say this. Watch it. Because last night's show will take is the perfect launching ground for people who have not seen ROH to a certain point. As um, we've covered here last week, ROH is en route to Showdown in the Sun, March 30 and 31 in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Now, here's the thing. And if you didn't see, I'm going to give you the brief synopsis on this. Wicked Nemesis and I actually do share the same definition of the word brief. Be careful. Um, number one, they led in last night with the finish to the Roderick Strong-Eddie Edwards match, which was supposed to be the number one contenders match for um, March 30th, at um, the first night of showdown. Well, there were dissenting opinions in the referees. One referee um, declared Roderick Strong the winner. Another referee declared Eddie Edwards the winner. Jim Cornette comes in, makes the executive decision that it will be a freeway dance. Davey Richards will be defending the ROH title against Rod Strong and Eddie Edwards on March 30th. In now, can I say something really quick about that? Because, yeah, come on uh, in. You know, just to let everybody know, I'm not going to be able you know, to be on the radio long today. Just got the baby home just minutes ago. But uh, you look at those three guys. Those three guys are not big. I mean, they're bigger than, than, most, than most guys, but they're not tall at all i mean they're they're not your your super heavyweights your heavyweights so to speak right and i like that you know the ring of honor has set a blueprint that the wwe is trying to follow as well with punk and daniel bryan being not that big of guys and it's great to see that you know here we have wrestlemania coming up and march 30th and 31st being ring of honors wrestlemania weekend as well it's great to see wrestling on a forefront again yes wrestling real wrestling not sports entertainment not wrestling wrestling and that's fantastic so big up to ring of honor and imagine you know, a lot of people and i saw a lot of people you know crapping on it saying that uh 
And how many times do we have to see this? Haven't we seen this already? Well, you know what? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Well, let me jump in and say this, because there are times when, and they don't face each other every week. Remember back in the late 90s, when it was basically The Rock and Triple H almost every yes, week or every other week or every three weeks. And at least but with, they also had Stone Cold in that too. Remember, it was those three, and they kept you know having stuff back and forth. I think that's what Ring of Honor's doing, except those are sports entertainers. Right. Ring of Honor's using wrestling. Right. And I hate that I missed it because you know, I saw it, but I can't believe that some people are like, I can't believe we've already seen this and they're doing it again. So what? Didn't you guys bought it? You guys bought it before. You're not going to buy it again. You're not going to watch wrestling, of course. Well, see, the question that I'm going to get to is, and this is something I'm going to ask both of y'all real quick before I go any further into the explanation. Even if you've seen a match previous, in this case, whether it would be Roderick Strong and Davey Richards, or Roderick Strong and Eddie Edwards, or a three-way dance between all three parties, if they've torn the house down and have had one hell of a match, what part of you is going to sit back and say, they're going to do it again? Because you know it's a guaranteed formula for a great match. Paulie, I'll go to you first. Well, I'm not a big fan of sequels. You know, I'm a firm believer... It's never as good as the first one, but you know, like you said, I would watch it again. You know, uh, based on performance, of course. As long as you know, as long as it's going to be around the same intensity as the first one. Um, watching wrestling for many, many years, I've seen guys go at it for you know what would seem like months, leading up to a pay per view, and then watch the pay per view match, and it didn't really you know match the intensity of the build up. But, uh, yeah, I mean, when it comes to, to, to rematches, just like Triple H versus Undertaker, WrestleMania, you know, they're building this one up pretty big, and, and I'm looking forward to seeing it because, uh, you know, honestly, I think uh, it's probably going to be a bigger, 